team. And follow us on Twitter. Please go to CatX TV. Cyclone Debbie has uh, come into northeastern Australia. It's pummeling the northeastern Australian coast in the state of Queensland. It's causing major damage, torrential rain, and power cuts to tens of thousands of homes. Debbie made landfall between Bowen and Airlie Beach in Queensland as a Category 4 storm. It had uh, wind gusts of up to 165 miles per hour. Prime Minister of Australia Malcolm Turnbull has told Parliament that he's activated a disaster response plan. The Premier of Queensland uh, said that everybody is going to be in shock tomorrow just to see the full impact of this cyclone. I'm bracing myself for it. It's the most powerful storm to hit the region since severe tropical cyclone Yasi struck northern Queensland in February of 2011. The Insurance Council of Australia has declared a catastrophe for uh, Cyclone Debbie uh, with the potential of uh, billions of losses for the insurance industry. Rainfall amounts of up to 500 millimeters are expected in some areas as Cyclone Debbie inundates uh, areas. The uh, chairman of the Insurance Council of Australia said that storms such as Debbie can in fact deliver billions of dollars of industry losses and uh, they're expected then to have a hit of some level on international reinsurance firms who are going to have to pick up the amounts over the policy deductibles or limits held by the primary companies. In the United States, insurers are facing the prospect of another round of hailstorm losses after severe weather pummeled parts of Texas, Arkansas, and Oklahoma over this past weekend. Uh, last year was a record for Texas hailstorm losses with about half a million hail claims followed by homeowners, amounting to a uh, burden to insurers of about four billion U.S. The latest storm over the weekend uh, brought hail balls or hail stones as much as four inches in diameter in several counties north of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. A spokesperson for the Insurance Council of Texas said that maybe 40,000 vehicles will be filing claims when all is said and done. The National Weather Service is saying that more strong thunderstorms and hailstorms could arrive in the same area tomorrow and later this week. Meanwhile, Swiss Re, coming out with their latest Sigma study, is saying that a combination of earthquakes, storms, and wildfires have caused global insured disaster losses to rise by 42% in 2016, up to $54 billion uh, as a result of natural causes. President Trump later today is apparently going to take the most significant step yet in obliterating his predecessor's environmental record. He's going to be instructing federal regulators to rewrite key rules curbing U.S. carbon emissions. The order sends an unmistakable signal that uh, Trump is hoping to rip up the approach of President Obama to weave climate considerations into every aspect of the federal government's operation. Some of the measures Trump could take uh, will likely take years to implement and are unlikely to alter broader economic trends uh, that are shifting the nation's electronic uh, mix from coal fire generation to natural gas and renewables. The order is silent on whether the U.S. should withdraw from the 2015 climate agreement in Paris, under which it pledged to reduce greenhouse gas emissions up to 28 percent by 2025. The administration, the current administration, apparently remains divided on that question. It was a rather dramatic fire at uh, rush hour uh, this morning in uh, Shanghai uh, at the home football stadium of the China Shanghai Shenhua Football Club. They're in the uh, Super League and recently spent uh, millions and millions of euros retaining uh, European players. The cause of the fire at the uh, 35,000 seating capacity stadium at the Hangzhou Football Stadium. Uh, which is the home stadium of the Shenhua team, apparently uh, did cause some significant damage. It did not damage the pitch. However, it's really unlikely that the uh, stadium is going to be ready for the next home game on April 16th, or possibly even for a preseason game um, with Arsenal and Bayern Munich uh, between those two teams, which is going to occur on July 19th. Here's good news for Theresa May. The energy-rich nation of Qatar says it plans to invest five billion pounds in the British economy within the next five years. The Prime Minister of Qatar announced the $6.3 billion U.S. investment at an investment forum in London. 
He said the outlay would come over the next three to five years through investment funds and other relevant parties in the uh, Gulf Arab country, which is a major exporter of natural gas. The 2022 World Cup host has already invested heavily in Britain and has a significant stake in uh, Barclays Bank, a number of London prominent properties, uh, including the uh, iconic Harrods department store. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. We'll keep our eyes on Cyclone Debbie. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.